Deep beneath the Caribbean island of Martinique, something unprecedented is stirring. Mount Pelé, the volcano that once obliterated an entire city, has recorded over 6,000 earthquakes in recent months. This isn't normal volcanic activity. This is a seismic swarm that has volcanologists issuing urgent warnings. The numbers tell a chilling story. Where Pelé typically registers a few dozen tremors per month, monitoring stations are now detecting hundreds. Each earthquake represents magma moving through underground chambers, building pressure in a system that hasn't erupted in over 80 years. 400,000 people live in the shadow of this awakening giant. The question isn't if Pelé will erupt again, but when. To understand why scientists are terrified, we need to look back to May 8, 1902. On that morning, Mount Pelé unleashed one of the most devastating volcanic eruptions in recorded history. At 7.52 a.m., the volcano exploded with the force of multiple atomic bombs, a pyroclastic flow, a superheated avalanche of gas, ash, and rock raced down the mountainside at over 400 miles per hour. The temperature reached 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit, hot enough to melt copper. The city of Saint-Pierre, known as the Paris of the Caribbean, was completely destroyed in less than three minutes. Of the 30,000 residents, only two survived. The pyroclastic flow was so fast and so hot that people were killed instantly, their bodies frozen in their final moments. What makes this disaster even more tragic is that the warning signs were there. In the weeks before the eruption, residents reported increasing earthquakes, exactly like what we're seeing now. Steam vents opened on the mountainside, animals fled the area. The local newspaper even published reports of unusual volcanic activity. But the warnings were ignored. Local officials, concerned about upcoming elections and economic impacts, downplayed the danger. They assured residents that Saint-Pierre was safe, that the volcano posed no immediate threat. The 1902 eruption changed how we understand volcanic hazards forever. It introduced the term pyroclastic flow to science. It showed that explosive volcanoes don't just threaten their immediate surroundings, they can obliterate entire regions in minutes. Mount Pelé sits on a particularly dangerous section of the Caribbean plate boundary. The geological structure here creates what volcanologists call a stratovolcano, the most explosive type of volcano on Earth. Unlike the relatively gentle lava flows of Hawaiian volcanoes, stratovolcanoes like Pelé build up enormous pressure before erupting with catastrophic force. The magma beneath Pelé is high in silica, making it thick and sticky. This viscous magma traps gases, building pressure until the volcano literally explodes. The result is pyroclastic flows that can travel for miles, destroying everything in their path. The 1902 disaster established Pele as the benchmark for volcanic catastrophes. It's why volcanologists study this mountain so intensively. It's why the current earthquake swarm has scientists around the world paying attention. Modern volcanic monitoring began because of what happened at Saint-Pierre. The tragedy taught us that volcanoes give warnings, but only if we know how to read them. The thousands of earthquakes now shaking Pelé are nature's early warning system in action. The truth is, Mount Pelé hasn't finished its geological story. The same forces that created the 1902 eruption are still active beneath the surface. The recent earthquake swarm suggests those forces are building towards something significant. So what exactly do 6,000 earthquakes tell us about what's happening deep beneath Mount Pelé? These aren't ordinary earthquakes caused by shifting tectonic plates. These are volcano tectonic earthquakes, and they reveal a very specific and concerning process. When magma moves through underground chambers and fractures rock, it creates these distinctive seismic signatures. Each tremor represents molten rock forcing its way through the volcano's plumbing system. The frequency and pattern of these earthquakes 
give scientists a real-time view of magma migration. Normal background seismic activity at Pele typically registers 20 to 30 small earthquakes per month. What we're seeing now is a hundredfold increase. The Martinique Volcano Observatory has recorded swarms with over 200 earthquakes in a single day. This level of activity hasn't been documented at Palais since monitoring began. The earthquakes are clustered at depths between one and five kilometers beneath the summit. This shallow depth is particularly significant because it suggests magma is rising toward the surface. Deep earthquakes, 10 kilometers or more below ground, often indicate early stages of magma movement. Shallow swarms like this indicate the system is much further along in the reactivation process. Current monitoring data shows the earthquakes follow a specific pattern. They begin deep, then migrate upward and outward from the central conduit. This progression matches the three-stage model of volcanic reactivation that scientists use to assess eruption potential. Stage one involves deep magma intrusion, typically 10 to 15 kilometers below the surface. Stage two shows magma rising to intermediate depths between five and 10 kilometers, accompanied by increased earthquake activity. Stage three occurs when magma reaches shallow depths less than five kilometers, triggering intense earthquake swarms and surface deformation. Based on the depth and frequency of recent earthquakes, Pelé appears to be transitioning from stage two to stage three. This is the critical phase where volcanic unrest can rapidly escalate to eruption. The pattern mirrors pre-eruption sequences observed at other explosive stratovolcanoes. Mount St. Helens showed similar earthquake migration before its 1980 eruption. Galera's volcano in Colombia exhibited comparable seismic patterns before its deadly 1993 eruption. Soufriere Hills on nearby Montserrat displayed identical earthquake clustering before beginning its devastating 1995 eruption cycle. What makes Pelé's current situation particularly concerning is the sustained nature of the seismic activity. Earthquake swarms that last weeks or months indicate persistent magma intrusion. Short-lived swarms often represent minor adjustments in the volcanic system. The ongoing nature of Pelé's earthquake activity suggests a substantial volume of magma is involved. The Caribbean tectonic setting amplifies the volcanic instability. The North American plate subducts beneath the Caribbean plate along the Lesser Antilles arc, creating the perfect conditions for explosive volcanism. This subduction zone feeds magma directly into Pele's deep chambers, providing the fuel for potential eruptions. Recent analysis of earthquake focal mechanisms reveals the stress field beneath Pele is changing. The orientation of fractures and fault planes indicates increasing pressure from below. This stress pattern typically precedes significant volcanic events. The monitoring network tracking these earthquakes includes 15 seismic stations positioned around the volcano. Each station records ground motion in real time, allowing scientists to pinpoint earthquake locations within hundreds of meters. This precision enables detailed mapping of magma pathways and pressure zones. Comparing current data to historical records shows the earthquake swarm represents the highest level of seismic unrest at Pelé since instrumental monitoring began in the 1950s. The combination of frequency, depth, and duration of these earthquakes has prompted volcanologists to raise alert levels and intensify monitoring efforts. The 6,000 earthquakes aren't just numbers on a seismograph. They're a direct communication from the volcano itself, telling us that deep underground powerful geological forces are building toward a potentially catastrophic release. The question scientists are racing to answer is whether this buildup will lead to a minor eruption, a major explosive event, or simply a period of continued unrest. The Martinique Volcano Observatory has raised the alert level to yellow, the second stage in a four-color warning system. Yellow indicates vigilance required and signals that volcanic activity has increased beyond normal background levels. This isn't cause for immediate evacuation, but it means residents need to stay informed and prepared. 
The evacuation zones around Mount Pele are based directly on the 1902 pyroclastic flow patterns. The red zone encompasses the area that was completely destroyed in 1902, including the former site of St. Pierre. The orange zone extends further out, covering areas that could be affected by larger eruptions or debris flows. These zones aren't arbitrary lines on a map. They're life-saving boundaries drawn from hard-earned geological knowledge. Modern early warning systems give us capabilities that didn't exist in 1902. Real-time seismic monitoring can detect the transition from earthquake swarms to harmonic tremor. The continuous vibration that indicates magma is actively moving toward the surface. Gas sensors measure sulfur dioxide emissions, which spike dramatically before eruptions. Ground deformation instruments detect when the volcano begins to swell as magma pushes upward. The critical transition happens when earthquakes shift from discrete events to continuous tremor. This harmonic signal typically begins hours to days before eruption. When monitoring stations detect this change, authorities have a narrow window to issue evacuation orders. For anyone living near active volcanoes, preparedness comes down to three essentials. First, know your evacuation zone and routes. Have multiple paths planned because pyroclastic flows can block primary roads. Second, maintain an emergency kit with water, food, medications, and important documents for at least 72 hours. Third, register for official alert systems and monitor them daily during periods of increased activity. Coastal communities around Pelé face an additional threat that many people don't consider. Large pyroclastic flows that reach the ocean can generate tsunamis. The superheated debris displaces massive amounts of water, creating waves that can travel across the Caribbean basin. The 1902 eruption generated a tsunami that reached Venezuela and caused damage along multiple coastlines. The regional monitoring network extends far beyond Martinique. Seismic stations across the Lesser Antilles share data in real time, creating a comprehensive picture of tectonic and volcanic activity. This network can distinguish between local volcanic earthquakes and regional tectonic events, ensuring that alerts are accurate and specific. Current preparedness protocols involve coordination between the Volcano Observatory, civil defense authorities, and local governments. When seismic activity increases, monitoring shifts from routine daily checks to continuous 24-hour surveillance. Scientists work in rotating shifts, ensuring that any significant change in volcanic behavior is detected immediately. The monitoring data flows to decision makers who must balance scientific uncertainty with public safety. Volcanic eruptions are inherently unpredictable in their exact timing, but the precursor patterns are well understood. The challenge is determining when volcanic unrest will escalate to dangerous eruption. The 6,000 earthquakes beneath Mount Pelé represent nature's early warning system in action. Unlike the residents of St. Pierre in 1902, we have the scientific tools and knowledge to read these signals. Modern monitoring gives us advantages that previous generations never had, but only if we heed the warnings when they come. Stay informed through official channels and be ready to act on evacuation orders. Subscribe to Quake Lore for continued coverage of this developing geological situation.